I can't be the only one who's seeing a bit of a strategic problem here, right? Because, like, siege towers are typically used for sieging, you know, getting over castle walls. We don't have any castle walls here. This is open battlefield. So what exactly are you going to do? It's like sending an ambulance to put out a fire. Uh... <laughs> Okay, definitely did not see that coming. You thought unpaid interns had it bad today. Back then, you'd get squirted out of a horn before falling 60 feet to go to war. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Totally Accurate Battle Simulator. That game where, thanks to some mods, we've been introduced to some very different units over the past couple episodes. Units like the Kalekin, who I believe was a five foot six prehistoric chicken with an attitude. And we also had the Witch Doctor, with limited visibility, but a surprisingly lethal bag of fart flowers on a stick. We never did quite figure that one out. But we can't forget about the Templar wielding his Jesus magic. Actually, was Jesus technically magical? Am I allowed to say that? <laughs> and the dragon, who, I, I mean, come on, like, it, it's a flying lizard the size of a greyhound bust. You really need that much more of a reminder? But the point is, you'll notice that all of these units are incredibly random. There's no common trend, which I think is what I like most. It means going into this episode, I have no idea what to expect. We're just gonna look around and try to find new stuff. We could find anything from King Arthur in the Round Table to a cyborg gigolo from space. There's really no guessing. It can be a little tricky to remember where you have and haven't searched in this game, but I'm like 99% sure we have not looked through the frozen world because like, I'm Canadian. I get more than enough snow and ice and bearsicles. Like 95% sure that's a, that's a bearsicle, okay. <laughs> we found the bear rider again, except for now it's called Warlord. Whoa, 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 never mind. This is very different from the bear cavalry that we've seen in the past, because it used to just be a dude with a funny hat and a, a really big hammer. Or more importantly, a really big bear. That, that was the main weapon. But now he's got, like, lawnmower attachments? Well, unfortunately, we don't have any grass out here, but I wouldn't mind seeing if he can chop his way through a phalanx, so long as they can stand up on the ice. Okay, guys, I, I know it's a little bit slippery, but you gotta stop spinning with the spears. You're gonna take somebody's friggin' eye out. <laughs> More importantly, a friendly's eye out. That is not what we want. Okay, it's 1800 against 1800. This is a perfectly fair fight on paper. I know the numbers aren't quite even, but it's hard to put a bear on paper. <laughs> oh yeah, that is pretty much what I expected. Oh. Never mind, the bear died. I'm not sure why that surprises me, though. Uh, of course, pointy sticks are going to be useful against animals. Humanity has been singing that song since the time of the deadly dodo, or whatever the frig the name of that thing in the intro was. Come to think of it, we ran this little experiment with the original bear cavalry, but I, I want to run it again because like, the normal cavalry, the, the horse cavalry, these wobbly warriors cost the exact same amount, but I can't imagine it's going to be a fair fight, right? Because like, well, once all the, the riders die, then you're left with horses against bears, and I know where I'm placing my money. Then again, the knights are quite a bit taller. Oh. Yeah, the thing is, a tree is quite a bit taller as well. Doesn't mean it's gonna dodge an axe. I'd feel bad if I teased the dragon today and never once got to see him in action. Or just see how friggin' big he is. Look, look at the size of the square. It always surprises me. But this should be like ringing the dinner bell, right? He should just roast and then devour a lot of these bears. Unless he decides instead to dive bomb his big lizardy anus at them? What, what was that? I just gotta run that one more time because that did not play out the way that I thought it would. Like, yeah, the bears close the distance. They're hacking away at his soft underbelly, or so they think. I mean, it, it's not that soft. He, he remembered that he can fly. I mean, about as well as a Tabs unit can. And then sometimes he's face down ass up but other times he's ass down face up. 
and then other other times he dies. I'm telling you, it's a totally accurate battle simulator. I don't want to spend too much time on the Bear Cavalry. They're awesome, don't get me wrong, but I've already made like an entire episode about them. So we're going to move on to finding more secret units like you, maybe? No? Oh, come on, you're not a secret unit? I was really hoping I was going to get some kind of alligator scarecrow with xylophones for weapons. Funny thing about hidden units, they're often... Well, well hidden. Surprising, I know, but especially for somebody who doesn't really pay all that much attention to his surroundings in this game. You know, when I come across a family of dog statues singing Kumbaya, I, I don't really know what to make of it. Are you a thing? Ooh. You're kind of glowy. Okay, yeah, we may have our alligator yet shaman. Alright, I'm not gonna rule out the possibility. Well, I'm noticing a dramatic lack of weaponized xylophones, but he does have a staff that's blinking, so that's a thing. I'm also really uncomfortable around old men in loincloths. I know it's a tabs unit, but still, something in my fight or flight response is just saying, get out of the gym locker room now. The honorable samurai do not believe in your wayward mysticism, shaman, so they will come for you in... Great numbers, which doesn't seem all that honorable, come to think of it, but I I'm sure the shaman is gonna pull some kind of party trick out of his not-so-well-concealed ass. Or he could just pull an army out of the dirt, I suppose. Those are very different-looking skeletons who are surprisingly strong. Because there were only like half a dozen of them, right? The samurai still outnumbered them, but lost. I think we're gonna have to have ourselves a bit of a bone battle. There's only enough room and tabs for one skeletal army, and you better believe it's gonna be the spooky factions. Because <laughs> they've got archers, right? Flaming archers should do a whole lot against the exposed nips of the shaman. Fire is super effective against nipples. It was the Pokemon type that never got included. I'm sure you can imagine why. It'd be really cool if the shaman could ramp things up over time, like, the, the first summoning are, are the warriors, and then if they can survive, the next summoning they would get, like, knight-sized skeletons, and if they survive even longer in the battle, then the next one would be, like, mammoth-sized skeletons, that kind of thing. It, it would give you, kind of, an advantage to protecting them, even though they already do have a pretty big advantage. I guess they are just continuously summoning an army. That That's pretty friggin' good. My frame rate is uh, about as lively as these armies are right now, so maybe I won't move around too much. I don't think these archers are gonna survive. They're focusing on all of the little random summons. You gotta focus on the summoners, guy. Okay, yeah, great. Uh, <laughs> too many bones. That, that's the thing about the skeletons, is that they're made up of so many little pieces. When a tabs unit dies, the Gumby just kind of falls over. When a skeleton dies, it explodes into dozens of little unit-sized bits. Either way, the shaman rules. Okay, fine, Spooky, you're out. Speaking of skeletons, do you guys remember last episode when I fished the dragon bones out of this water and, and that's how we got the dragon? Well, there are a whole bunch more bones down there, which we may have to look at at some point, but I'm more interested in the bones that are out of the water. Look, look at this little inquisitive guy. What are you doing here with your flute? Trombone? Tower? What? I can't be the only one who's seeing a bit of a strategic problem here, right? Because, like, siege towers are typically used for sieging, you know, getting over castle walls. We don't have any castle walls here. This is open battlefield. So what exactly are you gonna do? It's like sending an ambulance to put out a fire. Uh... <laughs> okay. Definitely did not see that coming. You thought unpaid interns had it bad today. Back then, you'd get squirted out of a horn before falling 60 feet to go to war. Maybe I was a little bit too hasty in my judgment. It's technically not called Siege Tower. It's just called Tower. It looks like a Siege Tower. But I guess in all reality, it's just like a high ground point that can get moved around on the battlefield. Anakin has all taught us that that's probably a good thing. 
<laughs> I just love the fact that they squirt out frontline fodder. It's so good. It turns, it doesn't move forward, which is important. So if you had an army in front of it, it would uh, hang out in the back until stuff closed the distance, in which case it might be in trouble. Oh boy, air go the horn. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like skydiving clowns. <laughs> yeah, so it, it's not invincible by any means, but it is a really, really cool unit that uh, leads to some complications upon death. Can we like crush them all, I wonder? Probably not. Oh, is this a really dumb stalemate? I'm assuming control. I'm just gonna back him up and uh, and see if I could like, oh no, can't shoot like that. Okay, we gotta, we gotta like go over here somewhere and then maybe we could shoot through. Did that work? Oh, oh, look at my arrows. They're, they're all twisty. I, I keep shooting shields. Okay, one, shooting shields, not a good strategy. Two, twisted arrows like that? Pretty sure they're against the Geneva Convention, if that applies at this timeline. Let's say for argument's sake, the bears are coming for us. What if we decided to set up some defensive towers and then put a whole bunch of dumb farmers in the front? Bears like farmers, right? I mean, I mean for lunch, not for friends. <laughs> little something like, ooh, that, okay. Towers are a little tilty. And this isn't Fortnite, but fortunately, they can still honk out the front liners or more importantly, rain down the pain. These are very unique. I gotta say, I like them. I don't know if they're more or less deadly than the typical arrows, but they feel more deadly. Well, as powerful as these towers may be, I get the feeling they're gonna act like bowling pins as soon as we put in our own siege units. And then we also need something with shielding or something that's resistant to arrows. Something stupid, mayhap? Something like uh, the cactus? <laughs> Should be able to survive a whole lot of hits? Yeah, I think that's gonna do it. <laughs> We're not all that worried about the farmers because now they're fertilizer and we don't care all that much about the squires either. They're just gonna get a great big hug from our frontliners. But I really wanna see you guys hit the towers. C can you maybe not drive off the edge of the map? C can we do that? I, I know it's a little narrow, but I would appreciate, oh my Jesus. We didn't hit one tower. Their range is, is just too much. It just dawned on me that we do actually have a castle in tabs, and I was thinking maybe I could come here and do something to turn the towers into siege towers, but right now I don't really want to mess with the defenders if they're feathered. You must be something, right? No? You're just a, a random castle chicken? Does chicken royalty work different to human royalty? Because the chicken commoner is living in a castle. Meanwhile, we've got a chicken with the crown living on a farm? And it's a thing. It's a chicken. I already knew it was a chicken. Wait, what? Is, is this a unit? It's not a unit, but there's more of them. I just found another king chicken hanging out in this tree. Yes, I'm aware, it's a chicken, but why? Third time's a charm. You got anything for me, big guy? Maybe I just need to get all the pieces and they'll combine to make some kind of chicken Voltron? Oh my god, it just dawned on me. People are gonna think that these videos are scripted. We didn't find King Arthur, and we didn't find a gigolo from space, but we did find a huge cock with a crown, which is like, kind of both. For real, how many chickens am I gonna have to find? It's a farm, they're, they're gonna be everywhere. Oh, here we go, you unlocked the chicken man. Oh boy, guess who's back? It is so weird seeing this guy again. I mean, the chicken man was from a time in tabs when the units didn't even have clothes. They were only distinguished by their different weapons, which was like four plus years ago now, I want to say. So he's back with all of his butt full of birds glory. I'm just gonna send in a bunch of peasants to fight him because I don't really want to sacrifice any other units. Who? He's, he's a little gassy this time around. Got a bit of a poof to him. <laughs> the birds are aggressive now too. Like they, they used to roll around, but I don't think they would explode. Some of them are getting kicked, but some of them are 
definitely exploding. That's, uh... uh <laughs> Oh, this friggin' game, man. I, You see what I mean? Who would have guessed this at the beginning of the episode? How many kamikaze chickens do you think it takes to blow up a tank? It's something I never thought I was gonna ask this morning, but something the Russians would probably like to know. Oof. Okay, ooh, oh, chicken man, you should have looked both ways before crossing the street. Okay, yeah, that, uh, that did not go according to plan. I thought for sure this was gonna be overkill, but apparently that armor is just thick enough to stop a chicken detonation. Let's try that again. Oh my god, there's so many chickens. <laughs> it's lagging, but in like clumps, it only lags upon birth. And then when they roll around, it's fine. Oh my god, look at them all. <laughs> there's a point there where the tank was almost completely buried. It's like it's snowing chickens out. I, I, you see, there's so many ways of breaking the game with each of these units, and I try to give each of them a little bit of a spotlight, but I swear this mod could last me forever. All right, you know what I think? That's gonna be it for this episode of Totally Accurate Battle Simulator, guys. We've got the shaman who can summon skeletons. We've got the chicken man who can summon chickens. We've got the tower who can summon squires. And we've got the bear cavalry who can summon our hearts. And if you guys want to see more, there are a whole bunch more hidden units. I, I think an update to this mod was actually released today. I, I was looking around online before I started playing and noticed, but I haven't even covered like the old version yet. So there's plenty more to see. If you guys want to see more, as always, be sure to leave a like in this video, leave a comment letting me know, and maybe I'll return to find even more ridiculous units soon. But thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time.